um, it's always nice to see. I'm glad that everyone came out here. I, I struggled and was debating on whether I would say thank you to everyone being here or if I would say congratulations because it is each and every one of our jobs as human beings on this earth to care about each other and I don't think that we should be thanked for actually doing that is what you're supposed to do. Um, <laughs> Um, when I, I came from class on Wednesday and I walked to the house and I saw what was written on the, the wall, I was shocked for about a second, to be honest. Like I took a step back and then I was like, oh yeah. And um, what I've been explaining to everyone who's been really shocked, the other LBC students, faculty and staff, is that that's not shocking to me. That's that's not that's not the first time I've been called that word by LBC students on this campus. I I'm not going to sit here and BS you guys. Um, there's no such thing as a utopia, and LBC is not that. Um, that what was written on that wall is just something that just looks familiar to so many of us that are standing up here on this stage, uh, st stage on this porch. <laughs> so many of alumni. Um, it's, it's familiar to us. This isn't a new, racism wasn't just created this week at LBC. I can assure you of that. Just like it wasn't created in this, com this country after Trump got elected, it was, it was here. This is a familiar world to many of us. Um, who's in track of my Sorry about going to college, uh, especially here at LBC, is that we try to gain new perspectives on life and everything when it comes either to race, religion, or social classes. Um, but one thing that is very important and that I see happen too commonly is that either people say that, as Brent was um, referring to earlier, that just because you don't see it happening, that it's not happening. And that's one thing that I really wish that people would try to remove from their minds because me, myself, um, I am a man of color. And even though things don't happen to me, I almost said hell, sorry. Um, I, I, was, um, I was voted homecoming king, so obviously people must like me, but that doesn't mean to me that everyone else is going to be walking around and having the same experiences as me. So just because that you don't experience whatever you're, what other people are talking about, do not ever once in your life try to erase other people's experiences because what you go through is not what they're going through, and hell, what, what they're going through is not what you're going through either. So always be open and listen to people and whatever groups you're in, whatever part of the community you are here at LBC, always try to engage other people and try to see what their point of view is and then let them see what yours is as well. Because the only way that you can make progress is by understanding one another and not only viewing things from your own perspective because otherwise you're just going to try to make a bunch of you and not have a bunch of others. It has to happen every single day. We cannot just stop here. We have to continue to make the change. Now is the time to start, and we will not stop until change comes to us. We have the voice, we have the power, we can make the change. Yeah. Something that I've noticed in this whole thing was a lot of people keep addressing racism, racism, racism. Don't get me wrong, that is a really big thing, but we also, we're looking at sexism. We're looking at discrimination against people with disabilities. We're not just looking at the color of skin. We're looking at everything. If you are a marginalized group, then it's something wrong. We need to fight for you. We need to stand up for you. Because even though you may be a person of color, if you're a man, you do have some type of privilege. So use your privileged limbs. Don't sit there and only stand under your oppressed one. Use your privileged limbs and go out there and fight for those who don't have that same privilege as you. So this event was uh, planned in a, about a week prior to the incident that occurred here on campus. Um, there is an organization called Sanction Camp Sanctuary Campus that is a national, a national mass walkout um, that occurred today among over a hundred college campuses where they essentially were taking a stand um, demanding that their schools become sanctuary places for the marginalized groups whose lives have been threatened by the election of President Trump. And um, when the incident occurred here on campus, it was just a very visual reminder to students here um, 
and a repetition of what students of color have been saying, marginalized groups have been saying on this campus, and that is that this LBC is not the exception. Um, racism is not new here, racism is not new in the world. These things have always existed. Um, but when this incident occurred, there was a huge fervent like uprising, uprising from students who were upset. So we just capitalized on that and brought them because our movements were going to be addressing the same thing. So um, we brought them together and we got the community and the campus together as a whole to make a stance that this is not the world and not the campus that we will stand for. Okay. Um, can you say whether you think things have improved? Um, I know there was a lot of t dialogue last December um, about increasing diversity on the campus. Do you have things changed or are they improving? Uh, diversity does not improve. Um, retention rates are still decreasing. Um, a way that we can include diversity here is understanding why the intercultural fund was cut um, and what that means to each diverse student here. A lot of us can't afford to be here and when a fund is cut, that is very dramatic. Um, we can't just post one person of color on a pamphlet and call that inclusive and equal to the campus because it's truly not. Um, it's just not a place where they show a vision, but there's slow improvement and we plan to keep pushing that as long as that we're here.